Ebro in the morning on Hot 97. Ladies and gentlemen, Ebro in the morning. Ebro will be back from Europe soon, but right now, good news. You have myself and Laura Styles, Yay. And the star of Power, Notori Nottens in the building. Hey, what's up? Power on Stars is back this weekend. Yes, Sunday. It's go time. Get your Stars package. I know I know some of y'all had it canceled. And then you just get it back when power comes on. <laughs> so go ahead and call up the cable provider. You know what's so funny? That, listen, I never even give a shit about stars. And I know a lot of people didn't until power. And that's real. Some people didn't even know what stars was. Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, no, no. Like, that's real talk. You know, real talk. So we have now made stars like the number two network right behind HBO. And we're the number one show on stars. I have so to it's go. Pretty cool. I have That's to go. Cool. I have to go on a binge because I haven't like I have. I still have uh, to catch up on the show. And Please but the, do. But the diehard fans were like, "You have to ask her what happened to Lala's character." <laughs> Everybody's always asking <laughs> about. Well, Lala plays Lakeisha. She's so great, and she's a friend in real life. And she's Tasha, my character's best friend. So at the end of season three, she kind of goes missing. Uh huh. But just trust, she's a strong, look, he's just a strong woman. So I think, mm. I think she's going to be okay. Okay, okay, okay. She's a, Sarah Santa. She's, she's a fighter. All right. And um, I'm excited to see, you know, her character and where it goes. All right, well, she's coming in soon, too. So we're going to have to press her on this. Yep, get some yep. information. She'll be in this week, too. <laughs> get the scoop. You know, I never thought about it that way, though, that it really is true. What a cool thing that is for you guys, that stars existed and people, they had started to throw, like, shows, original programming started there a little bit. Mm -hmm. And people would be like, oh, I heard about a doc or, like, something. Mm. But you guys were really, I mean, what a cool opportunity it is. You know, and I guess 50 and company took a risk yeah, by thinking, let's try to make this happen. And it worked out. It is a risk because you don't know a show is going to pop off. You don't right. know it's going to be the show that kind of makes the network really come alive. And I'm so glad, you know, we all dove in. When I first read the script, I remember I was living in L.A., looking for a job. It said 50 Cent executive producing. Courtney Kemp was the writer. I just remember thinking this has the potential to be great. Right, right, right. And here we are four seasons in, you know, 8 million viewers, you know, per episode. Like, it's insane how much people have really connected to the show. So I'm glad we got to be kind of the, the underdog from the beginning. Well, because I was going to tell you... I agree with you 100%. You see this and you have the potential to be great. You could have also said this has the potential to be trash. I mean, you know what I mean? Like you could have said, oh, a, a, a big rap star is pr producing it. That doesn't mean it's going to be all good. The time. Right. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean. And then shows do fail just like that. Right, exactly. Right, right. Now, now or they're you, corny or they're not really real. And now, granted, 50 is a different kind of mind when it comes to his business acumen. But still, that doesn't always translate to artistic integrity or being great. And look look where we are now. It's pretty you incredible. You know, we have a good group of writers, too. Like, of course. You know, 50's behind it, but we also have, you know, Gary Lennon, Courtney Kemp. We have people, you know, and Gary worked on Orange is the New Black. We have writers like Courtney, our showrunner. She did the Bernie Mac show. She did um, The Good Wife, and she's been nominated right, for right, right. So it's not like they just threw this together and was yeah. like, oh, yeah, 50 doing a show. You know, it's really a team, and the good thing is we have a powerful team. You know what's so Pun crazy? Intended. And I know you were, I know you were so sick of the Empire comparisons, how it was always a thing, right? But remember how when Empire came out, and we were just like, this shit is gonna crash and burn. And the reason we were saying it like that because after a while, we were kind of sick of all the celebrity cameos. We were just kind of like, okay. Well, all but right. also hold on, there's a, and there's another, and there's another layer to that story, and not that we should pit. "Quote unquote no. black, black shows against each right, other, right, right, right. But the conversation—it's hip hop, so naturally competition conversations start. It's just part of the game. Mm -hmm. And I remember everyone being like, "Yo, probably myself included, to be mm -hmm. honest. Yo, Empire's numbers shitting on power. Look at these numbers, and, and we're all like, oh, well, it's, it's network. Fox. They're on Fox. It's network TV. Yeah. And then you kept watching, and you're like, hmm, numbers are fading a little bit. Oh, numbers are still fading. Power's getting really popular." Here we are. Yeah, but the different kind it's of true. fans that Power has, or the dedication. Well, it's gotten yeah. bigger. It's grown. Well, it did the grown, opposite. Which I would rather, you know, for, for me, I would rather be in a show that has like a slow burn. Slow and steady wins the slow race. Slow and steady. <laughs> as opposed to this bright comet that mm -hmm. flashes in the sky. And, and let's and throw dies. a million things at it, a million yeah. guests and all this shit. And ultimately, it's what like, was the show? Was the show good enough? No. It's really like, you know, just because something shines don't mean it's gold. You know what I'm saying? So you got to really put, and it's nothing against Empire and what they're doing in 
they seem to still be enough successful on right, their right, network. Right. So it's no shade to them. It's just we're different. And you, you, and we you are guys totally are totally different shows. So special, yeah. And we just happen to have some crazy diehard fans. <laughs> and to buy stars, like, you have to subscribe. To, yes. to get, you can't just like turn on Channel Five. You have to get stars. So that means that we, our fans are dedicated. Yeah, they go to a whole different level. You're beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank uh, you so much. I feel beautiful. Wait, did you shoot any anything while you were pregnant? Of course. Yeah, I'm I'm eight months. I was shooting until my <sighs> fifth month of pregnancy. Wow. Wow. And you, when you, you'll see the show. But this season, it's so interesting for me, as a you know, this is my first pregnancy yeah. and embarking on this new journey I'm watching stuff like oh my gosh I remember that's when I first had my first ultrasound or oh. I remember like certain scenes I remember what I was of going because I was also not telling anybody oh wow so that okay. no one knew like I was three months pregnant shooting running to the bathroom like Excuse me. The smell of your pineapple is making me <laughs> nauseous. And they were oh like, gosh, your senses are really heightened this <laughs> week. It was because I was preggos. Wow. That's so cute, though, because obviously it's your first pregnancy. I can, um, of course, no matter how important the show is, your pregnancy is the most important thing in your life. Of it course. takes over your entire life yes. in so many regards. So, yeah, of course, you just tie everything together with everything. a moment. No, it's it's everything's connected, and the foundation is that. And you announced, I thought, I read this that you are naming your first child, but male or female, Curtis after Fifty Cent, which I just thought. I, was- I <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I forget. You I definitely I, didn't read that anywhere. I may have lies just upon made. Lies. I may have just made that up. You definitely do, did. Do you do know? Not uh, start that. They yeah. be like, wait a minute. She said. Hold that. on now. She said on the show. <laughs> I heard. Yo. I heard on High ninety seven say she was naming that baby after Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> so negative, and it's a girl. Anyway. It is a girl. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, uh, Curtisa is not what I would do. Curtisa. Nah, nah. Oh, wow. Oh, special. Yeah, I'm um, trying to think of versions that, yeah, none of them were. No, we're going to stay away from it. Okay, please. now, I, I, you're, you're not, you probably won't believe us. I don't know how, if you ever get to hear our show, but we are yeah. really not into the um, typical slander and, and bullshit talk. We really don't do it. Mm. But every once in a while, I do get drawn in to someone being like, check out this little bonchinche, if you will, some tea. Yes. And Laura did I drag me in. Y'all, y'all, y'all have a little tea. <laughs> it's a little, but it's a little <laughs> small, but it's small it's like tea. It's not, it's not, yeah, we don't, we're not out here. Some people out here gulping. We, yeah, we're yeah, not yeah, out yeah, here yeah, gulping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're taking an occasional sip. <laughs> Lady likes it. So, exactly. <laughs> like the Queen of England. Yeah, exactly. Pinky up. Pinky up. Pinky up. So Laura was like, um, we had just had Adrian Bailon on the show. Okay. And she said, oh, did you see Adrian apologize to Naturi on TV? And I said, I, I, and I'll be honest, this is how bad I am. I'm like, I didn't even know they had problems. I, I really hadn't followed the... How the, are you in the music? You ain't know about 3LW? I, you I, well, no, no, no. I played 3LW. Oh, I just didn't follow along with the beef. But the oh. funny part is I that, played no more. I played the records. Yes, I was on the radio, records. okay? That's what I'm talking Three about. Three Little Women. <laughs> I, I know the records. Okay. But I didn't follow sure. the beef. Gotcha. So I didn't really know. I, I knew there was something, but I didn't know how bad it was. And I'll just tell you the truth right now. We watched that video. And I am not going to lie to your face while you're sitting here and tell you that I believe that you accepted that apology for one second. Because I've never seen someone look like they accepted an apology less. <laughs> did you what? Act, you accepted that apology? <laughs> what? I heard you guys on the radio that day you talking did? about Yeah. yeah. You were like, because you looked like you were looking at it like. One of my girlfriends <laughs> called me and was like, yeah, they're talking about it on Ebro on the morning show. They're talking about how your face was definitely not. <laughs> I don't know what you guys saw. Okay. I just will say, you know. It's it, it wasn't something I I appreciate. It wasn't something I was like, oh, I need this apology and it's gonna. I had let go of any animosity towards her, towards the group, because it had been like fifteen years. Of course, right. of course. But for course. me, it was more so like you know I appreciate that. It was a difficult time, and I just tried to you know receive it and and let her know that. I'm moving forward, and as women, we should both be able to do our separate things. I mean, so it's more that it surprised you a little bit because it wasn't a moment you needed it anymore. No, and I, they told me before I was coming, you know, on that they that she wanted to oh, address okay, okay, something, okay, okay, okay. so they sure. gave me a heads up. That's nice. I didn't know exactly what was going to happen or what was going to be said, but I felt like she really, genuinely wanted to kind of squash it. I I don't know why. What is my? What, I'm not my face. <laughs> 
I just accepted it and I said thank you. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I, I should have done more. No, you shouldn't have done anything. Maybe a little tear. Doing. Maybe a tear. <laughs> maybe one of these. That's what people wanted. That's the thing. I'm not for not, those but this, things. Like, this is why I loved it though because look at you just being honest. There's nothing wrong. I'm with just what keeping you it real. It. But right. they wanted me to be like, and no. They wanted the Oprah hug no, it out. I, cry. We, we love that you didn't <laughs> do all just, that though. It was just real. That was the thing. We love that you didn't do all that. Oh well, we love that you were just like, okay, I've already obviously looked like you moved on. You are, you're on a smashed show. You're Thank killing you. it. You're super successful. I know. And it's like, so that's why it was, it brought humor to us because you was like, all right, whatever. I know. You guys you know? definitely <laughs> were enjoying that. We did. Y'all and we love Adrian too, but it was still of course, fun. Of now, um, so tell us a little bit though about the transition from the post 3LW years to getting, obviously it's been a long journey and now here you are on a hit show. I mean, it's so funny because people starting forget so that. young. Yes. And that was one of the things, speaking of the, you know, being on The Real and Adrian Bailon apologizing, the the kind of, what do you call it, a clap back from my former manager. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's that. the part that was just like, really? So and what did your former manager I posted, I posted, girl, bye. Because <laughs> there was just so much drama the next day. Like, we never did anything to Naturi. I can't believe Adrian's apologizing. This is phony. This is fake. And it's just like, you know, she spent a lot of time, like maybe like she had every, time. a lot of time on her hands she had time. to talk about that. Mm-hmm. I know what I went through. And mm-hmm. a lot of people who watched my journey from being a teen pop star. Sure. It was not an easy time. My self-esteem, issues with my look. And these are all real things. So post 3OW took years of recovery. So when people try to poo-poo on it or people trying to come back, you're just trying to, you know, make yourself relevant again. Right. Or feel and, better. Uh, feel better about the fact that you know you did wrong. And karma is, uh, you know. And one, thing, get you. and one thing is crazy, though, because, like I said, this is your personal journey. And this is something that like you went through. Like, it's my truth. You can't tell me. Yeah, so so that was interesting. So yeah. the, the shade goes to those that deserve it. Um, but for me, after 3 W, I I took time to go to college. Where'd you go to school? Seton Hall University. Okay. So I'm born and raised in Jersey. Shout out to Jersey. Hello. I'm an East Orange Jersey girl. And then I decided to study political science. I was like, forget the music business. I was so traumatized yeah. that I couldn't even think about the business. Then I got on Broadway. That changed my life. What was the Broadway show? Hairspray. Wow. Did you ever see Hairspray? Classic. I mean, I, I know the story. I know the... Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the... So good. I play Little Inez. So, so what, was, what made you want to go audition and start reading scripts again and just going back to, you know... Being... Honestly, it wasn't even me at the time. <laughs> it's funny. The guy I was dating was like, you got to get back out there. You you know, we were in Jersey. I was in college. Like, you need to do something that they can't control because they were trying to blackball me. And how old were you in college, by the way? Wait, 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 wait. They were trying to blackball you. Like my former manager mm. and post 3 w they, they, I couldn't get signed because... They still technically owned me. You know how you're in a group. To a deal or a management deal? To a rec label deal or anything? To anything. They had me under a production deal, a label deal. Oh, yeah. You Um, were a teen star. They had you locked up in every way possible. Oh, yeah. So by the time it was time to go to school, let's see, I was like 19, 20. So I was like 20 years old. No one would kind of touch me because they were afraid that there was going to be some backlash. So I was just like, all right, what can I do that has nothing to do with the music business? And my friend got me an audition. Bernie Telsey brought me in. I sang for them. I never forget just feeling like this is a whole new world. And they actually cast me as Little Inez in Hairspray. And you hadn't done acting previous to that? Uh, I mean, not really? I mean, I was on a couple things with the group. I had done some small acting, not professional. Y'all had like a guest spot on Moesha or something? Yeah, (laughs) Taina. We were on a show. (laughs) Taina, oh my God. I remember that. Do you remember that? Yes, Christina Vidal. It was so funny. We had a guest star. (laughs) That was about it. But I knew I wanted to be an actress. Yeah. Like I was born to do this. So when they called me, I had to sing, dance. I did the whole thing. And I got the part. And <sighs> three years later, I was, to, you know, I stayed on Broadway for three years. Wow. So hold on. When you went to Seton Hall, did you go as like a full-blown regular student who lived there and did the oh, whole? Oh, yeah. I lived in a dorm. So hold on, hold on. The female So hold on, dorms. hold on. There is a situation that I can picture of you in college and like y'all would go out and you probably had girlfriends who would like beg to play 3LW at the party so you would sing and dance. They would play 3LW. Of course they would. Like I would <laughs> like, or even like college kids, they'd be like, when I would come, they'd be like, and they'd be like, 
do your song. And it was like, you yeah. leave me alone. It's still a fresh wound. I'm not ready. It's still too a fresh soon, wound. Too soon. It's too soon. I wasn't ready. But it was it was interesting because part of me felt kind of bitter and angry that I was sitting there. You know, I had to struggle to, you know, get financial aid, to pay for school. I had scholarships. Wow. And I had no money. Like, I had nothing. And I had literally all these people from college thinking... That, that you were rich, probably. They were like, no, we saw the X5 yeah. in the video. <laughs> you was just driving. Where's your car? And I was like, none your, of that is real. Your story is so special because if you wow. really think about it, Rosenberg, she was like a young girl pop star, right? right? Then she gets to, to live like the regular college well, that's what life. I find, that's what I find so struggle. fascinating. Real, fact, real regular. I don't know how many... <laughs> I don't know how many other stars right. in history... Mm. There are people who went to college and weren't... Like, Will Ferrell went to college and wasn't a star and uh -huh. became a star. But how many people totally tasted it, yep. were in it for a minute... And they I mean, had to go back. And then were like, I'm gonna just be a regular college kid now. Now and I loved it. That's so cool that you got to have that. Like, it must have grounded you and made you so much more normal. Exactly. I think a lot of people would have maybe gone crazy or you'd be somewhere strung out or stressed or... You know, you would let the industry dictate your future. Being in college and being a regular kid and, you know, young adult, by that point, it actually showed me nothing is promised. And it, as soon as you can go up, like we were on TRL tour, number one on mm -hmm. the countdown. I had sold 1.6 million records, but I had like $5,000 to my name. And then in school, I had to realize you got to work and be consistent and rely on yourself. And that was one of the things that I learned. What, um, what amazing, you guys were out in 99 ish, 98? Well, we actually dropped in 2000. You dropped in 2000. We okay. got a record deal in 99. I, I wasn't in 3W in 98. Okay, so in, nine, in, two, in 2000, you're in the group. Mm -hmm. um, That's when we like uh, were really popping. Do, do you remember any like big time musicians at the time who you guys got to meet at like shows? Give us some of the memories. I, I, you saw, yes. I saw a little clip of like you know how there's this like, Instagram account I follow like, called Two Thousands and they'll just show yeah, random they show clips. So many. I think I get those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was like, wait. I, I think I saw pictures of you with like Lil Wayne and you guys were oh, yeah. so young, but so, so babies. Young. We were we like, were on tour. I remember so the TRL tour. Destiny shot. I was super excited to meet them because. As a group, right. we looked up to them so much. Beyonce, Kelly, and Michelle at the time were the new Destiny's Child. And I remember meeting Eve, um, Nelly and the St. Lunatics, of course. Uh, Jessica Simpson Murphy. was on that tour. But other than that, I mean, we were in sync. I remember meeting Michael Jackson when he did that. See, I just want to start asking these questions. Hold on, keep going. No, it's crazy because he did a big concert after 9-11 to raise money and that whole... So we were in the group, and we were asked to be a part of it. Mary J sang on the record, 3LW, and we did this huge concert. It was in Washington, D.C., and practicing with Michael Jackson and being backstage and seeing him and really, he was just like, just, just tell the truth, just tell the truth. He was all about, like, you don't have to try to, don't try to, to sing or to over-sing because it was a group of people, mm -hmm. and he said some people were trying to over-sing other people. Wait, was he, he just, like, coaching every, like, overseeing like we were having. Them? We were having a rehearsal, okay. and he was doing his lead, and he felt like the rest of the group was kind of trying to over sing over. He was like, "Don't, don't do it like that. It's from the heart, you know. Just, just tell the truth." That's amazing. It was all about. Did you get a picture with him? I did. Yeah, I have. It's so fuzzy. Um, of course it is. My <laughs> mother fucking, has a fucking two thousand one. <laughs> I know. What what happened to? I mean, I know. Thank it was like, God, we have HD now. <laughs> um, but it's funny. All these images, my mom scrapbooked, and I have all these little things that. Just takes me back to a place where I can't believe that was my life. Yeah, that is such an amazing and interesting run. And now fast forward and you have a hit TV show. It's very, it's cool. It is pretty cool. I can't believe, A, like you said, coming from that, being able to sustain as an actress when you're a singer first. A lot of times there, there was, even when I got Little Kim, my first film, they were in like, Notorious, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I played Little Kim in Notorious. Um, and people were kind of skeptical, like, wait well, a minute, the girl from 3RW is going to be... Right. So I remember it, it was that. a lot of drama. I remember I remember talking about that, and I could imagine, because, like, even when we, we, we've been talking about the Tupac film, right? Yeah, yeah. How no matter Amazon what, me. whenever there's a biopic, it's like, you're always going to get heavily criticized, because it's such an always. important story and to tell. And these are major hip-hop. This is not like the biopic on random Joe Blow. Right. It's the biopic on some of the... You played Little Kim. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> So um, I'm sure it's hard. Yeah. How was your? Have you have you seen and talked to Kim since playing her? Uh no. I, well, I saw her once. Um, 
I wish, you know, there was more camaraderie at the time. I really She wasn't into to, it at the I don't remember that well. Yeah, yeah, she wasn't yeah. that into it, right? Yeah. But well, people you know, had mixed. Listen, there's there's a tough part as an actor because yeah. you're here to play your part. Yourself, yeah, you're playing your part, but yeah, that doesn't mean that the actor is going to love the movie, love the script, love. All, you have just no idea or if they're yeah, ready yeah. to even have that story be told. Or you know, there's so many things that I that mean, are we, involved. We saw now. it with Jada. You know, she was like, she gave props to the actors for doing their thing, but she was just happy the way it was portrayed. Yeah, and, and again, I think that was yeah it. So I try, I tried not to take it personally, although it was my first movie and yeah. it did hurt me personally. <laughs> it's uh, um. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just, it's hard making a biopic. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can, you can't really avoid judgment. I yeah. love I love that line. It's so true. I'm trying to take it personally, even though I definitely did take it personally. <laughs> I've been there. Um, well, that's my keeping it realness. That's I what know. happened on the real. Ex mm -hmm. Exactly. I try, I try, but... Well, you're real, like, nah, sometimes I feel away. <laughs> sometimes I just did don't know you, what to uh, do. In those days, uh, did you ever get to meet Mob Deep in the, in the 3LW days? Actually, I don't think I ever did. I recently got to meet... At Prodigy, you wow. know, may he rest in peace. It's so crazy because most of my career was, you know, we were young, pop, R&B, so we didn't really... You guys probably did more pop shows even yeah. than, than yeah. urban yeah. hip-hop shows, I'm guessing, right? So we weren't really in that circle, like, you know, as if we weren't that kind of group. Right. But I always respected my Mob Deep, and, and of course, you know, the other day when I found out about Prodigy's death, I was just first off shocked because I had just, I was at his book signing and my man actually knows him and was good friends with him. And I was there literally a few yeah. months ago talking about, you know, Commissary Kitchen and how he, he basically created all these recipes from, you know, being in prison. And I got a, I got a picture with him, got to talk to him. And I actually, he was like, take a picture with my daughter and my kids. They love you. They love you. And I took a picture with um his daughter and I just feel like, I really pray for, you know, his family because yeah. that was not something I expected. And when you meet someone and I respected his journey, he's, you know, a hip hop legend again. Like legend. so many people, you know, love you and, and adore you, but they don't realize you're still human. And still sick. And th that's the thing yeah. we keep talking about is that. Yeah, we forget. We forget. Like I've known he's been sick his entire life. Like as long as I've known who he was, but. You weren't thinking like and and the, and that the he, yeah that it would and, and but that is the average life expectancy of someone who suffers from sickle cell anemia. He's only forty two. May and, he rest and in peace. It's just it's unbelievable. But um, I'm I know glad you glad I got the honor to meet him and just to be able to respect you know like what he was doing with the book is just is deep how he was able to reach out even later in his life he was still like just down to earth super cool guy. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm I'm I haven't read the book yet. I'm gonna order it on Amazon and check yeah, that out. Yeah, you should. It's super dope. And there's an audio audio book too. I know his audio books are great. If you don't feel like reading, yeah, and he's <laughs> saying he did the same with his biography too. Yeah. Um, Naturi Naughton, she stars on Power. It's back on Stars this Sunday. It's Yay! Be amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. Do you guys watch? Are you excited? I, I, I'm gonna binge because I I bounced around. Okay. So I know some of the story, but that's I, I need to I'm binge. not gonna lie. Come back in. I'm not gonna lie. I got behind on it when it started. You know when it's that okay. happens with a series? You've had it happen. Of you course. You get behind on a but series. But then I catch back. Then up you gotta and catch like, back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next time you see me, you're gonna be like, wait a minute, Tasha. Yeah, no, 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 it's gonna be annoying. Tasha is acting I'm crazy. A, I'm gonna see you in like two years, and I will have just finished. I'm like, I have a lot of questions to ask you about. <laughs> stuff that you shot seven years seven ago. Seven years ago. The show won't even be on. You'll be like, no, no, no. But no, 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 no. Because I know. Because now series live forever. It's when you get to it. Um, I hope we do. Uh, uh, this watch. Sunday, stars, uh, power on stars. Thank you, Natari, for coming Thank by. You, Thank you Natari. so much for the time. You guys fun. are awesome. Thank that was you. Great.